Texas. They say everything's bigger here, and they're right. We've got big cars, big hearts, and even bigger stakes. This is beef country, Texas. Home to the Alamo, the Cowboys, and the largest military installation known to man. So big, it has a big name. Fort Hood, the great place. It's got a Texas-sized podcast as well. And this is it, right here. Fort Hood's great big podcast. Yeehaw. I hate cedar trees. As well you should. I, oh my gosh, I am (laughs) just beside myself with allergies. I am not doing well. And welcome back. This is the Fort Hood Great Big Podcast. All right. Yeah. I'm Charlie Mabe. I'm Brianna Dew. And I'm Dave Larson. And I feel like... (laughs) And Brianna, you're a little under the weather. Well, I understand you're a little under the weather yourself. I am. I got hit with the bug. It got me again right for the New Year's. Dave so. is the only one that's in his right mind here today. Yeah, but I got sick two weeks in December, so. Oh, okay. So I you're had, patient. I had the flu last week or last You're month. patient zero. Exactly. I'm going to blame him. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm <laughs> running from the trees. What oh. movie was that? Trees. It was uh, Donnie Wahlberg running from the trees. The happening. The trees for the bad guys. I've ruined it now for our 12 I've listeners. I've never seen it. Really? Yeah. You just ruined, <laughs> ruined it. The trees for <laughs> the bad guys. It's got Donnie Wahlberg running, or Mark Wahlberg, not Donnie. Donnie's his brother. That's, Make up your uh, mind. I'm, I have allergies. It's <laughs> messing with my mind. No, it's the antihistamine. Is it? Yeah. It's the antihistamine. Blame it on the drugs. It's the drugs, folks. <laughs> so the last time we all got together, it wasn't even Christmas. No. Yet, uh, we uh, sort of we so, sort of did something mean. We dropped one and then we ran away. Mm-hmm. So actually, we dropped two. Yes. Um, we dropped a deuce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we're back. We're back from our break, and you can obviously tell we've gotten so much better. Yes. Um, <laughs> we've, we've, there's been a lot of growth Yes, the last few weeks, a lot of self-reflection, a lot of recentering. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing if we make it to number three. Um, <laughs> so, uh, last time we got together was, it was Christmas. Mm-hmm. So catching everybody up, what, what all did you do for your, during your Christmas break? Brianna. Well, for me, I went and saw my family. Mm -hmm. Uh, We had Christmas together, and we went and saw the new Star Wars film on Christmas Day. Yes. Cool. That was fun. And then um, I flew up to uh, Pennsylvania with my boyfriend, and we saw his folks and his family. And we also stopped by New York City. Wow. It was my very first time being there. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what did you think of the Big Apple? It was beautiful. I... It was just so crazy seeing everything like in the movies and the TV shows and in commercials and and seeing it in real life. It was it Uh was so exciting. Like I never thought I'd see those places in real life. It's so so funny because I visited Washington, Mm D.C. and uh, suddenly I'm seeing all these places that I had only seen like on money Uh and in magazines and pictures. Mm -hmm. But my reaction was, oh, yeah. Uh, Lincoln uh, Memorial. Yep, seen it. Looks really? just like it does. Oh, there's the <laughs> Washington Monument. Yep. White House, exactly like I thought. Yeah. Oh, no. so Glad I made this trip. You're not easily impressed then? I was not. You Washington need to be uh, did not easily impress me. Maybe I'd make a good senator then. <laughs> now, uh, did uh, something else happen to you while you were on... Uh, Yes. On break. What is that? Wow. Show that. Oh. Show that. Oh. Yeah. Bling. Yeah. Yeah. There's some bling on that finger, girlfriend. So a little sparkly over here. <laughs> tell us. Tell us. Dish it. Dish it. So 
the first day I went to New York City, uh, my boyfriend and I, we went up the Empire State Building. Mm -hmm. And when we went to the observation deck, he proposed. So and he's I, not your boyfriend anymore. I know. I keep, you know, I've, I've actually, I don't think I've said it out loud. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. It's so weird. Make it so. Okay, my fiance. <laughs> think oh my goodness yes but you know he got down on one knee and, uh, and he proposed to me and i said yes and then we went up to the very very top of the tower because we were on the 88th floor which is the observation deck mm -hmm. and then we went to the very top and we took photos and we went back down to the bottom and and took some uh, engagement photos and it nice. was it was so magical <laughs> so when is the big date do you know yet we don't know yet so we're still working out a lot of the logistics because he's still stationed in japan mm -hmm. um, he needs to finish his um contract we're gonna see about maybe getting a curtailment oh, and wow. maybe he can come and join uh the first cavalry division wow oh. first team yeah <laughs> Well, that's a tough one to, to that, beat. How about uh, you, yeah. Dave? Yeah, I, can't, you? I, I can't touch that with a 10-foot pole. Oh, I mean, no. uh, Christmas was quiet. It was in the home. Uh, had had my boys swing by and really butchered a duck, overcooked it. And, uh, we'll never <laughs> cook duck again on Christmas. Oh, um, no. uh, other than that, I mean, it was it was real real quiet, real chill. All right, what about you, Charles? Uh, you were a road warrior. Yeah, wife and I drove up to Kansas, where I'm from to spend Christmas with my uh, family there. So aunts and cousins and my mother and stepfather and then my grandmother, who's getting on in years. She's 92. Nice. Um, sometimes I say she's 93 and sometimes I say she's 94, but I'm pretty sure she's 92. Did it snow? In Kansas? Mm -hmm. No. Oh. It was, uh, was kind of like it is here in the 60s. Oh. Um, and then the last day we were there, it jumped down to the 30s when we left. So mm -hmm. oh. we were all bundled up and driving back down to Texas. It was mid-70s when we got here. I mean, we were just throwing off sweaters and, I mean, just dying. We were melting. After Christmas, what was that? We just lost uh, something. Dropping phones. Yeah. Oh, the phone. Yeah. Was that mine? That was your oh, phone. Was mine. All right. A phone has dropped. And every time a phone drops in the studio, we like to like An to angel talk gets about its it. wings. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Clarence! Clarence! <laughs> We're going to shift gears now. Yeah, I think we, you should. We're going to talk about New Year's resolutions. Okay. All right? Because it's that time of year again. I'd like for each of us to talk about a New Year's resolution or resolutions that we have. Uh -huh. um, so I'm going to start off with me this time. Okay. All right. I gained some weight in the last year. Say it ain't so. No, I did. <laughs> um, and so I think this is a pretty common resolution. I have already started going to the gym. I'm going to work that weight off and get to my svelte All right. self again. And I will provide updates on this podcast to keep, people. Keep you honest. All the two people that listen, and I know who you are, <laughs> mom, about how I'm doing uh, with my resolution. That's great. Brianna, what's... Uh... So one of my resolutions is to read one book a month. I want to try to read a little bit more. And I think that's a reasonable goal. I don't think it it would be... I don't think it's too much. I don't think it's too little. Just once a, once a month. Maybe read like a chapter a night mm -hmm. or like 100 pages a night or 50 pages, something like that. Is there a specific book you had in mind? No, not really. Um, I, I think I wanted to read a few more um, autobiographies. I used to read a lot of autobiographies when I was younger. And then I stopped because I read a few from people that turned out who I thought were um, who I who I considered noble and a role model. And, and then they turned out. Um, they were dirt bags. Yeah, well, f yeah, <laughs> some of them end up in jail, and I'm, you know, oh, there you go. I was like, uh, maybe I should not take their words to heart. Are you reading the Bill Cosby story? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not read his autobiography. I don't even know if he made one, but I was pretty sure he did. I did he? Okay, the no. Putin story. <laughs> Bill Cosby, America's dead. Yeah, so I, I want to read at least one or two of those of, of the twelve that I, I'm planning on reading. Well, cool. Yeah. My turn? Yeah. yeah. Turn. What's your yeah. resolution? Hey, uh, it's 2020 and I got new glasses, so I guess I'll see better. 
Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, no. Hey, uh, yeah, we're in the same boat there, brother. Yeah. Uh, I've already been, you know, hitting the road a little bit more. I s- blew out my knee in, in November, so I wasn't working out, and progress went, you know, completely down the tubes. Mm-hmm. I gained 20 over the holidays, too, so, wow. you know. Well, that's because... All- it will no help from that duck that you killed, but yeah, but you know I've had your well, food before. It's when, good. When the so duck was bad, then you had to eat the chocolate. And my wife's baking because she makes great holiday cookies, mm. and I ate way too many of those. Well, I'm sure you know it's it's one of those double edged swords, especially as a husband. Yep. If you have a wife who's a good cook, and my wife is a very good She's cook, very as well. good. she makes the delicious food. You're trying to lose weight, but you can't not eat the food. I mean, what are you gonna do? Yep. It's life. Your it's life. Yeah. Setbacks happen, you know. It's what you do after your setback. Well, I think we all have some pretty noble resolutions, but uh, honestly, I mean, what am I going to say? Hey, Brianna, you're, that resolution sucks. Get a better one. No, <laughs> no that was a... <laughs> hey, get married. Oh, that's a good resolution. Yeah, yeah hey. So. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the new year is a great time to reboot life. Get a fresh new start, and not just for us here, mm-hmm. But for you listeners as well, in fact, Dave and I went out just around Fort Hood talking to people about uh, what their New Year's resolutions were. And really quick before I get into this, because we we had uh, some recordings of them, I got a question for you, Brianna. Okay. Um, because you're our resident younger person. <laughs> so whenever Dave and I approached what appeared to be someone around your age <laughs> and asked him, if they'd like to talk to us about their New Year's resolutions, they looked at me like I was walking up to them wearing a diaper full of stink a whiff So what's up with that? Oh, my goodness. I I don't really know. Um, I don't. Are, are you trying to say that, like, younger people don't? It's like they were like, don't talk to me. I don't know you. Don't talk to me. Strange, bald okay, person. Okay, you've never met Charlie before, and he walks <laughs> up to you. With a microphone mm-hmm. and a video camera guy following him mm-hmm. going, hey, would you want to talk to me about New Year's resolutions? What are you going to do? Uh-huh. Uh, probably. Yeah, I probably wouldn't stop, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I didn't know you. Yeah. There you go, Charlie. Yeah. I think for younger people, it's like everything you say and everything you do is is can be put out on a platform that will last forever. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's. The kind of reservation for so many people do so so many stupid things on the platform that last forever. Why won't they do it for me in front of a camera? I don't know. Maybe I I do remember there was a trend a couple years back where people didn't want to make any resolutions. Like it was kind of like the cool thing to to not not maybe not necessarily change yourself, but it was just cool to not care. You know, like younger people, they tend to yeah, yeah, it's cool to like you know, be blase about everything. <laughs> so I think maybe that's what it was. It's like, oh, we just did a, uh, you know, a revolution around the sun. No need to change anything. Maybe it's something like that. Well, thankfully, we did find some folks that did want to talk to us. Okay. And uh, they had some really interesting things to say. We let uh, them go after. Yeah, we let them go. There's <laughs> nobody in the them. basement. So don't don't even bother to look. Nobody down there. Yeah. It's perfectly fine. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> But no, we we uh, talked to some people. Great. Um, <laughs> Zip ties were <work> great. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the crickets button. <laughs> That's, I don't even know what the volume's not up. You're hitting uh, random things now. <laughs> uh, Lord, will we make it to number three? There we go. Oh, crickets. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well, anyway, we got, <laughs> thank you, crickets. <laughs> anyway, we, we talked to some of those folks, and they had some really interesting responses. Okay. Like Sergeant Zoe Lee with 1-5 Cav. Now, he wants to take his skill set to the next level. Getting more confidence, uh, raising, like, uh, sk- like, finding skill sets that you can find to approve on. Right. It's like how, how to get better. Like what skills? Ninja? Uh, not ninja though. No. <laughs> uh, more like uh, more confidence, like doing like what you're proud of your job is, or like find find more things to do, like uh, being creative. Oh, 
Cool. What is your job? Uh, I'm an infantry. All right. So you want to be more creative ways to kill people? Oh, not really. More like able to uh, destroy an enemy within, like, do it more effectively. More creative infantrymen. Yes. But then CW2 Veronica Jarrigan with the 664th Ordnance Company said she wanted to pump up her body as well as her mind. Sort of like you and the, the whole books thing. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to improve my PT score and uh, start the new ACFT program. Um, and then I also am taking some college courses. I'd like to earn my bachelor's degree this year. That's a great goal. Yes. Have you, so you've taken the, the new uh, fitness test? Not yet. I've started training, so I'd like to improve on that. Yes. Uh, what do you think of it so far from what you've seen? Uh, it's fairly difficult, but I think with, a, you know, like, with keeping my habits and, you know, keep training on it, I think um, I've seen a lot of improvements on other people, so I'm hopeful as well. I think that's a good goal to have. And finally, we have Sarah Yokobitis, who was with, well, her daughter Lillian, uh, because she's not in the military. Yeah, uh, not everybody on a military base is actually in the military. Say, <laughs> what? But, but anyway, uh, Sarah was kind of zen with where she is in life right now at the moment and has wisely learned from past resolutions about what she wants or doesn't want to do with her future. Um, I've had lots of resolutions. My favorite one that I did was I ran 2018, 2018 miles in 2018. Oh, wow. I don't think I want to do that again. <laughs> so I don't have anything specific. I was pretty happy with how last year went. I just want to keep, you know, keep. being healthy, happy, spending time with my family. <laughs> But, you know, I think uh, overall most people kind of want the same stuff. I think overall. so, too. I think so, too. I think they just want to be happy with, with who they are and where they are. No matter what you're asking for, I think that's what it boils down to. Happy, yeah. healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wealthy and wise. Yeah. So we've got a really exciting 2020 to look forward to. Things have already kicked off in quite a spicy way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm excited. But we can't go forward without looking at the past. Because what is it they say about the past? Hindsight is what? 2020. Yeah, and that's where we are now. So when we come back from break, we're going to have folks in from the Fort Hood Sentinel. They're going to talk about the coolest, most bestest stories they did of last year and give us a little scoop on what lies ahead for all of us. Very cool. I love a year in review. <laughs> Save money and get special military discounted tickets to your favorite attractions like Six Flags, Schlitterbahn, SeaWorld, Disney World, and more. Stop by our Leisure Travel Services office located right here on post to get those tickets. For more information, go to our website at hood.armymwr.com. Have fun. If you've got problems and feel like you just can't get answers, there's a place for you to turn. The Inspector General's Hotline. They take your issues seriously. If you're at the end of your rope and need someone to reach out to, grab a pen and take down this number. 254-287-7209. That's 254-287-7209. The Fort Hood Office of the Inspector General. They inspect generals so you don't have to. Fort Hood's Great Big Podcast. Your tax dollars at work. Drank all the whiskey. Well, welcome back. And joining us is Sentinel News Editor, Brandy Cruz. Brandy, thanks for coming. Thank you. All right. This is like, you know, the New Year show, I guess. And the Sentinel, I'm looking at it. That's the cool part of being, you know, this job. We get to see it before it actually hits the streets. We look like a comic book, don't we? Tell yes, me about that. I love it. I, we, we had the idea of the comic book, and our designers just went with it, and it just turned out amazing. And I'm really excited about everyone seeing it. Let's talk about some of the top stories of 2019. For you, what's the number one story? Okay, so the year is all about new beginnings, and the I think the top story is about new leadership. 
We kicked it off with uh, Daniel Hendricks. Uh, he's the new command sergeant major for three corps in Fort Hood. Mm-hmm. He arrived in January, and uh, then later in June, Lieutenant General Pat White joined three corps in Fort Hood, and uh, then they recently deployed. No, I shouldn't say that. Why not? They're no, gone. It wasn't, I think it wasn't they did. Recently. I think that is a factual statement. Yeah, I know, can, but it yeah. wasn't recently. So. Yeah, well, you know, well, that was you the year review. Everything's yeah. relative, man. <laughs> So then um, looking at all the quotes that Lieutenant General White said during his change of command ceremony, I really liked the part where he said, I've stood on the shoulders of many and I will continue to allow my shoulders to be stood on. And I think that says a lot about a leader. And I think uh, Fort Hood is very, very, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? I don't know. Very lucky to have him. I mean, the Corps is deployed now. Yes. Yes. and you know, we don't we don't hear a whole lot of that going on. But uh, I mean, we did have some VIP visits here at Fort Hood. Uh, tell me, uh, g- give me give me some more rundown. Okay, well, uh, we received a p- visit from uh, Vice President Pence. He was uh, just welcome to Fort Hood, just with arms wide open. And I know, at least for me, it feels like a lot of people don't support troops nowadays. But I think that the negative voices probably just shout out longer, but or, or I guess uh, louder. But I think he showed us that people do still care about the troops and they do still care about America. I think it's uh, it, it, it's really different. Uh, you've been a writer for newspapers. Uh, you've been here at the Sentinel for two years, right? Um, going on two years. Going on two years. Uh, this is probably one of the bigger stories you got to cover. Yes. Uh, since you've been here. I know you really got up close and personal. You got, took that one photo. Yes. And you're just practically touching him. Yeah. That uh, was pretty wow. interesting because he was making his his way around the room. And he was shaking hands with everybody. I just assumed he was going to come in, sit down, and that's it. But he made his way around the room and shook everybody's hands. And I have this great photo of him. Um, standing next to uh, General Camper. I thought it was really cool. Wow. wow. That's a great picture. I know. We'll, let's really post cool. that to the Facebook page. Yeah. Okay. So we need that if, if you're wondering what that picture is, take a look at uh, the Great Big Podcast Facebook page. You can see that picture that Brandy took right there, right next to the vice president. Well, then there's turning something old into something new, repurposing the old hospital. Uh, Brandy, tell me about the Shoemaker Center. Okay, so what Fort Hood did is they took Building 36,000, which was the former Carl R. Darnell Army Medical Center, and they put it to good use. They used a lot of um, unused space, and what they did is they brought in all these organizations that are meant to help soldiers and help their family members. Now everything is all consolidated, and so if, say, you're talking about one thing, and they're like, maybe you should go see, you know, finance— They'll just send you across the hall. Right. And so it's great. Well, Brandy, thank you very much for being on the podcast this week. Thank you. And uh, we'll be back with sports. Yay. Yay. After this. Go team. Go sports. (laughs) Yay. Hey, everybody. Let's practice space heater safety. Unless you want to kill your friends and family. And in that case... Don't wait. Let's do it. Yay. Don't put papers and magazines near your portable space heaters. Does anyone even have newspapers and magazines in 2020? Make sure your space heaters are plugged directly into walls. Don't use expansion cords. Don't place heaters on tables or carpets or cabinets. I want to see the guy who can place a heater on top of a cabinet. But don't do it. Just take a picture and take it down right after. I'll give you my email at the end of this thing. Wait, no, stalker. And unplug your heater when you're not at home. Unplugged heaters can't kill you. Yay! You can keep safe and warm this year. Also, what are you doing with a space heater? This is Texas. 
And now a topic near and dear to my heart. <laughs> it's called sports, and it's Blair Dupree. Yes. <laughs> Sentinel Sports Editor joining us right now on Fort Hood's Great Big Podcast. Hi, Blair. Hi. How are you? That's all we get? <laughs> Hi. How are you? <laughs> Welcome. I don't talk a lot usually. Uh, so. Yeah, that's these print people, you know? She's a woman of action. Yeah, <laughs> a woman of action. Hey, my favorite time of the year, it's NFL playoffs. And go Pack Go. <laughs> they get to play this weekend. Mm -hmm. And the Cowboys got a new coach and everything like that. But we're not here to talk the NFL, are we? No. Neither. Texas, Friday Night Lights. Yes. Ooh. And you actually, you actually had a local team go pretty deep into the yeah. playoffs, didn't Lamp you? Passes went all the way to the semifinals. Right. Wow. Football season was very long, but um, they kept it entertaining, and they're a great team, so it was fun to watch. So what's it like going to some of these professional venues and mm -hmm. see a high school game? Does it, is it kind of, are the teams dwarfed by the size of the stadium? No, um, the Alamo Dome... Um, Lampasas played there. The fan support from Lampasas was just shocking to me. They are a 4A school, which is bigger than the school I went to in high school, so I think it's big. But compared to the 6A schools around here, it's right. It's small, but like just the fan support's ridiculous. And even they were playing Needville that week, and even their fans filled two whole sides. I mean, it wasn't really empty at all. Right. So, I mean, not really... So this is actually your first <laughs> journalism job, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. and sports is, have you always been into sports or no? Um, not like you'd probably think most sports editors are. Um, I went to a small high school, 1A high school, where mm -hmm. everyone played everything. Right. You know, you didn't have to try out. You just walked on. Right. And, um... Sports impacted me in a way where it's kind of shaped my character, work ethic, mm -hmm. um, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So that part has interested me. But photography, I've been taking pictures for nine years now. So, and mm -hmm. sports was just something I kind of naturally just like hooked on to, just the thought of being able to freeze a moment. Right. You know, and kind of just keep it preserved for a long time was just kind of thrilling to me so right. and then being able to play and even in high school kind of help coach and manage teams mm -hmm. um kind of helped me learn about a wide range of sports and be able to kind of anticipate things and mm -hmm. you know pay attention to how plays work and that type of thing now you grew up in east texas right but yes graduated from mary hardin baylor so i mean you're mm -hmm. you're 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 familiar with the area before you ever came to fort hood Yes. But tell me about what it was like for you straight out of college mm -hmm. and then working at a military installation for the paper. I didn't even graduate with anything in journalism. So for me to get this job was kind of weird. And I was like, <laughs> God, why am I here? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, there's a reason because there were other things that came up that did, that fell through. Mm -hmm. So I was like, there's there's a reason. So uh, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't go to college for journalism. No. Why did you apply for a journalism job? Um, well, I did learn business and I enjoyed learning business, but I was different from all of my peers in college. They all paid attention to, you know, this <laughs> and that. And I'm over here at my yearbook job thinking, okay, how am I going to take pictures of this event that I've photographed for years now and make it look different from the year before? Or, you know, how am I going to leave my mark on this university photography-wise? So that was always my main concern. But I thought when I saw this job, I remember it was like midnight and I was laying in my bed and it popped up on my phone. And I was like, you know, maybe I could do that. I just had this feeling. So I sent in my application and mm -hmm. now I'm here. So but It's <laughs> almost incredible. like uh, sometimes you have your idea of what you want to do in life but that life has a different idea of what yeah. you need to be doing. Yeah. Blair, we're, we're glad you're here. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So Thank what you. about 2020 besides better eyesight, you know, 2020? Uh, what yeah. does 2020 mean to you and what do you hope to bring to the table? Um, I think it'll be fun to kind of, 
you know, work on the paper year round uh, this time instead of kind of just coming in at the busiest point. Because right. I know right now it's challenging finding things uh, to cover. Um, but I think this year from a leisure standpoint, I want to try to cover movies and things Mm -hmm. Um, because I like watching movies and I think a lot of other people enjoy them too. So I think that would be fun to cover. Right. And uh, just, you know, the amazing rock and the strongman competition were some new things Mm -hmm. on post because, you know, there's a lot of running competitions and that's great, but not every athlete runs all the time. So doing... No, (laughs) no. Or their strength isn't totally running, but more, you know, lifting heavy things or pulling a Humvee or whatever they throw at them. So I think the, like, trying new things and being willing to try new events and do all these new things is really good. And that kind of, like, panders to a wide range of athletes. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, we thank you for all the hard work. Thank you. And we're going to put you to work even more in the new year. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like this was an opportunity for me to learn, and I've kind of always enjoyed writing besides school. Like I have a creative story that I started when I was 16 mm-hmm. or something, and it's over 120 pages. I just add on to it when wow. I'm bored. Oh, wow. So one of my mentors in college, you know, he said, everybody's got something to offer. So I feel like when I meet new people and the people I work with and everything, everything's a learning opportunity. Like you never stop learning till the day you die. So, you know, I feel like that's kind of what got me through the first month was I was like, I'm here for a reason. It's just hard to figure out right now, but I'm going to figure it out. Blair, do you know who Tom Wolf is? He was a journalist and later a novelist, and he once uh, wrote an essay, and he said that all journalists start out as newspaper journalists because they want to be a novelist. (laughs) So, who knows? Maybe that's in your future someday. That would be cool. That would be cool. It sounds like creative writing is one of your strengths also. Mm -hmm. And I love to read fiction, Mm -hmm. so um, it's kind of like an escape but me, you won't of. find any fiction in the Fort Hood scene. Exactly, no, it's all exactly, true. exactly. <laughs> Only truth. <laughs> yeah. Well, Blair, thanks again for coming by. Thank y'all. And guess what? We will hear from the Fort Hood Sentinel living editor. Oh, yeah. Right after this. Life. Hey, everybody. Who that going to the big show? Who that? No matter who it is. Damn boy. Rustle on in and kick back at Samuel Adams Brew House. That's right, free appetizers mm-hmm. while they last. Football squares. Yeah. Giant Jenga. Jenga. Free pool. And of course, the Super Bowl. Ooh. No matter who you're rooting for. Cheesehead. Join us at the Fort Hood Samuel Adams for good food, great drinks, and better times. For more information, visit hood.armymwr.com. Yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing rolling. Anybody that needs to check out video equipment, we'll do an official photo. Let's go. Get it on camera. Fort Hood's great big podcast. Close enough for the government, good enough for you. Get it on camera. Better come correct on your photo appointment. On camera. Better help yourself. And last but not least, believe it or not, we are going to delve into the Fort Hood Sentinel living section with living editor Jasmine Castrolon. Hi. Hi. How are you doing today? Welcome to Fort Hood's Great Big Podcast. I'm excited to be here today. Yeah, as well you should be. Hey, the living section is where we get to go kind of deep dive into stuff and and go talk a little bit more about things and magazine length type articles. And we covered a lot of stuff in the living section in 2019. So tell me a little bit about what we dove into and uh, what were some of your favorite stories. Yeah, sure. So some of my favorite stories were the chaplain's uh, anniversary. I thought that was very, um, very fun, very lively. Mm -hmm. Um, The new garrison chaplain played uh, Chaplain Cheppy. 
he went ahead and he played live music with his band uh-huh. um, at the Spirit of Fort Hood. Oh, we had him on the show last Yeah, month. he was playing oh, yeah. live music here. Yes, yeah. yeah. so that was super fun to watch. And there was hundreds of people at Spirit of uh, Fort Hood, and they partook in um, you know some lunch together. So that was um, that was fun. You've been the living editor for how long now? Um, two years wow. almost. Yeah, two years. Um, looking at it from, from your perspective, uh, and you have a unique perspective because you're also in the Army Reserve, right? Yes. So tell me how that works for you uh, and, and how, it, how it affects on how you cover Fort Hood. Well, I think that I have, um, I have a different perspective because I'm not just a civilian or I'm not just uh, an active duty service member. Mm -hmm. And because I also do the same thing in the, in the um, army sector, um, Mm -hmm. I do public affairs as well. Mm -hmm. I think that I'm able to kind of use, utilize that to my advantage. Mm -hmm. Um, So I know everybody's rank and most of their units and the lingo that they share with me. Mm -hmm. So they'll say something. They're like, Oh, sorry, I meant to say, and I'm like, Oh no, I understand what you're saying. So it's kind of fun. So you're the translator. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Something else that you are very much into uh, the back end of the living section is the traveling soldier page. Yes. And traveling soldier, believe it or not, I know you've been here two years, but traveling soldier has been around forever in the Fort Hood Sentinel. And it's one of the most popular elements of the paper because why it tells you where it's cool to do in the area. Um, what are some of your favorite stops in 2019? And tell me about them. So one of my favorite stops was uh, the Cathedral of Junk in Austin. Uh-huh. Um, it was super funny because the gentleman who owns the Cathedral of Junk, uh, the his neighbor was like, he like um, tried to sue him. And he was like, oh, it's an eyesore. I can see it from my backyard and I don't want to look at it. Right. And, uh, and then the, the same day that he got it approved, he moved out. His neighbor moved. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So it was, it was pretty funny. The goal is trying usually to try and keep things within driving distance for the single soldier, you know, mm-hmm. hey, within 75 miles, mm-hmm. you know, you don't need a pass to go, mm-hmm. you know, one of those things. Um, what do you think is the coolest thing in the area? If you had, if you had to just okay, I don't have much time, but I want to go see something this weekend. What would you tell a soldier to do? This, Put you on the spot. So this weekend we're gonna go to Salado, and we're going to, um, or I guess it would run next weekend, but right. we're gonna go to Salado. And we're gonna go to the historical Stagecoach Inn. Uh-huh. Oh, that's cool. I've I've had a sandwich there. Yeah, their food is very good, very tasty. I love Salado. I like Salado, like, too. It's like stepping back in time. I know. It's, it's a very quaint little town. They have a lot of, like, little cafes. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a winery, if you're into those kind of things. They have very, like, uh, they have, like, a little ice cream shop there, too. They have a lot of antique shopping and thrift stores, so mm-hmm. that's something you like to do. But I love Salado. Like, I like to just go there, grab some coffee. Um, get some lunch, walk around. 30 minutes up the road, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Well, Jasmine, thank you for stopping by on Fort Hood's great big podcast. And uh, happy new year. And safe travels, right? Yes, safe travels. Thank you. We look forward to seeing all your adventures and reading about them in this new year in the Sentinel. Yeah, I'm excited. Start a fresh new year, fresh adventures. And we'll be back right after this. Hey, it's Melissa here from Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions. Now is a great time to stop by and see what furry friends they have waiting for their forever home. Or, down boy, you can follow their Facebook page called Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions. The great thing about pets that come from Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions is, all right now, be good, they're practically free. Well, sometimes they're free. They just need a good mommy or daddy. So stop by Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions. Check the Facebook page of Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions. Or even call Fort Hood Shelter and Adoptions at 254-287-4675 to make someone very, very happy. So are you making any New Year's resolutions? I make them, but I tend not to keep them you know lose some weight work out more get in better shape well here's an idea why not make a resolution to help someone other than yourself this new year and become a volunteer volunteer huh right here at fort hood 
How do you go about doing that? Well, let's hear from the big voice guy. He knows everything. That's right. To find out more about becoming a volunteer at Fort Hood, give the Army Volunteer Corps office a call at 287-8657 or stop by their office in the Shoemaker Center. You'll find them on the second floor in Building 36,000 on Darnall Loop. And we are. We are the Fort Hood Great Big Podcast? Yes, we continue to be. We are, still. Yes, still. Nothing has changed. We have not, well, something has changed. Brianna has left the room. She has left the room. But we're still the same size. We are? Yes. We're still as big as we were because she's kind of (laughs) tiny. That is a fact. If I left the room, we'd shrink a little bit. Yeah, but, but I'm bigger than you are, so. So we better both stay in here. Yeah. Or else we'll, you're listening to Fort Hood's medium-sized podcast. Yeah, whatever. So we all come from some place, he said, getting serious, looking seriously into the microphone. Oh, my. Yeah. We all come from some place. Mm-hmm. I know I did. Did you, Dave? I did. I did. Tell me, how did you come to be here? Not like for the, <laughs> the beginning. <laughs> Take fast I forward through the yeah. army years. Oh Let's yeah, talk about our army origins. Uh, don't talk about the army no, origins. Talk about the army origins. Oh, don't talk about the war. Uh, oh, since the war. No. Since the war. Okay. No. Uh, yeah, I enlisted when I was eighteen, straight out of high school. Really? And where did that take you? Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and then it took me to basic at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and. Uh, uh, AIT, which is Advanced Individual Training, uh, where they taught me to be a broadcast journalist. That's cool. How'd that work out for you? Yeah, well, tell me after the show airs. Yeah. You know, we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, 40 years later, I'm still talking. So oh, Very good. You, go. you know, I similarly enlisted in the Army. Yes, you did. Actually, I did National Guard first. But you were in college. I was. Well, I was out of college. I, this sort of actually the Army. People say join the Army and, you know, get get your college degree and all that. I joined the Army and dropped out of college. <laughs> it, de- it, it derailed me. Well, there you go. Um, but I was going to college for journalism. Uh-huh. And then I joined the National Guard. The um, Minnesota. The Minnesota National. North Star Guard. Uh-huh. Um, and then I decided to to kick it up a notch and go big time with the regular army as opposed to the <laughs> not regular <laughs> army. And uh, that's where I actually met you. Yeah, Dave. first team. Yeah, but he wasn't actually Dave back then. He was Master Sergeant Larson. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting that through our lives, you starting in in Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and me in Kansas, going up to Minnesota, then down here to Texas, right. and then we met, and then years passed, and we are back together again. So you never know what the future holds for you. It's a small world, It's Charles. a small world, it, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> you know, I find that it's a world of laughter and a world of tears. It's a world of hope and sometimes a world of fears, but... Deep down, there's so much that we share. It's time we're aware. It's a small world after all. Oh, yeah, Disney. (laughs) But a a great big podcast. (laughs) You're going to put that to music, right? I Absolutely. There Uh, will be a music bed. uh, Okay. Anybody who who has heard this, there wasn't music when we recorded it. But magically, thanks to the wonder of audio editing, you heard music underneath that. Feeling it. Or not, if I'm lazy. <laughs> the, uh, but the point I'm making is, uh, we all we joined the military, and the military sort of created a sea change right. in our lives, as it does, I think, for most people. Wait, we joined the army. Sea change. Yes. Sea change. A land change. Oh, yeah, there you go. It created a land change for us, um, meaning that it was I. I like to call them life decisions. It is a decision, it is a decision that you make mm-hmm. that your life is fundamentally changed afterwards. Yep. Um, and coming into the military is like that, but also leaving the military. And that doesn't necessarily mean 
you know, you did your four years on your contract and you're getting out. Mm -hmm. Even if you're a lifer, as they say, yeah, you're going to leave at some point. (laughs) You're going to leave. Or they're going to tell you to go. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to our guest today at the second part of our podcast. And he is a transitions service specialist, or is it the transitions service? A transition a service. A transition service specialist, but to us, he's the Yes, transition. he is. It is Jerry Hernandez. Thank you for joining us on the show today. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Well, we're glad to have you. So tell me, there's something coming up that's going to help people who are maybe thinking about getting out of the service. We will miss you. Or are leaving because, hey, it's they've done their time and it's time to, to get up and go. What is that? Yes, sir. It's the 44th biannual Fort Hood Mega Winter Career Fair. It's going to be on the 14th of January here at Club Hood from uh, 10 o'clock in the morning to 3 p.m. Wow. So career fair, what what is that? Career fair is where we're going to have a bunch of employers, approximately over uh, 545 employers, offering over 100,000 jobs are available. It's going to be either locally nationwide, and we have some overseas. Well, hey, now, I heard that it's a tough job market right now. It is a tough tough job market, but it's like anything else, as you mentioned before, being prior military, you have to prepare, and that's what SFL TAP does for you, Mm -hmm. help you prepare for that transition for the next career. So you mentioned SFL TAP. What is that? Soldier for Life Mm -hmm. Transition Assistance Program. Okay, and now this is because our podcast reaches everybody. So it's not just soldiers out there. It's soldiers, families. It's my mom. I know it reaches my mom. (laughs) It 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 reaches just tons of people all over the world. So explain to them. So a soldier is is getting ready to leave service. What happens? Okay. For any soldier that retires, Mm -hmm. them and their family members, they have soldier for life, assistance for life. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anybody who serves, just does serves the regular ETS, serves four years, six years, whatever the case might be, gets out, not retiring, so we'll have a limited time after they get out. Right. Okay. But we have services for all of them, resumes, how to prepare your resume for your next career. If you want to go back to school, we help you get to school. If you want to be your own boss, be an entrepreneur, we help you do, do that also. So what you're telling me is the Army not only gives you a job in the Army, but they're going to help you and hook you up for a job after the Army if you will allow them to. Yes, sir. Plus, not just the Army, any armed services. That wow. you have to so if you, if you serve in the Air Force and get out here on Fort Hood, we will gladly also help you out. And you, it's all, the, the job fairs are also available for the family members or anybody in the local area mm-hmm. because these jobs are available to all U.S. citizens. So, okay. wait a second. Anybody in the local area? So, if I'm... Frank Johnson, and I have no association with Fort Hood, no association with the military. I can come here and, with a resume and, and try to put, throw my hat, hat in the ring. Yes, sir. Just go to the visitor center, get a uh, pass, get in to Fort Hood. We'll gladly see you. Well, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, how do you get uh, or what do you tell the soldiers? Because these things happen twice a year, right? Correct. Once in January, and again, you do it in June? Correct. Okay. Uh, how do you... How do you get ready for something like this with 500 employers and possibly 100,000 jobs? And wow, that's that's just big numbers. But really what you're looking for is that one job where you get that one good fit. Correct. We have a lot of soldiers. And I like to see soldiers because, we, you know, we're dealing with Fort Hood. Right. Um, they'd like to stay in Fort Hood right. in the central Texas area for several reasons. The economy is good here. Right. Uh, we have a good hospital. Not just here on Fort Hood, Sir Damsey, but we also have the VA, mm-hmm. which a lot of folks love to stay here. So when we do this job fair, it's, it's broadcasted through our Facebook page. That's all SFL taps. So they see that. So somebody mm-hmm. from Minnesota mm-hmm. or New York will also can come down here or vice versa. You have a soldier here on Fort Hood. I don't want to live in Texas anymore. It's mm-hmm. too hot. All right. I'm used to the cold. I want to go back to Minnesota. So we have folks to come from a Minnesota. We have folks actually have a whole corridor uh, about 10 employers coming from Michigan to our job for this time. Wow. So if they come from Michigan, they're looking for, you could be here, get out, and then go have a job in Michigan. Correct. Wow. So 
We cover all the states, like I said earlier, uh, both local, national, and some jobs overseas will be available here today. Does the Fort Hood Career Fair draw a particular employer set, or is that broadened over the years? Well, it has broadened over the years, but what we try to do is limit it to the type of employers. Mm-hmm. We don't want just one selection of, of a job fair or, or occupation. Mm-hmm. We want a broad. Right. And we want to make sure that these companies are offering good job to the soldiers or families as they transition out. Right. You know, we don't, we don't want them to go from they're earning, like an example, 30K a year and then go down to a job that's only going to offer them 15K a year. Right. That would help. So that's what we do at the SFL TAP. We vet these employees, make sure they have good jobs for these soldiers that are getting out. Mm-hmm. A few years back, you guys changed the name of it from job fair to career fair. Is that because of that? Yes, sir. Uh, it, because it, it, you're looking to, you're, you're building blocks for, it's a career, not a job. Correct. Okay. Uh, helping you to get for your next career, your next stage in life. Right. Your next soldier for life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. I think that is such a huge benefit. I mean, if you've got a job at any other place out there, you know, name your, your poison as far as a company goes. If you're seeking to move on, mm-hmm. that company's not going to hook you up to help you get a job somewhere else. No, correct. That is absolutely amazing. Now, for folks that are interested in, in going to this one, what should I do? How should I dress? What should I bring with me? How do I, how do I, can I be set up for success? Come in business casual. Not jeans. Right. You don't have to wear a suit or tie. Uh, there are some employees that will do on-the-spot interviews. But most of the employees are trying to get your foot in the door, see if you meet what they're looking for. Uh, so don't come in shorts mm-hmm. and T-shirts. Uh, leave your kids, leave your animals at home if you can. Mm-hmm. I understand there's some single parents. and Those are the exceptions. You're still welcome to come. Just be prepared. We have the listing of all the employers are coming out on our Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And also the Fort Hood Center has put a tablet, uh, on insert, paper, insert yeah. out there. Mm-hmm. So do your research, see what jobs are out there. Organizations pique your interest. Right. There's a website out there. Look them up. Just like the army, you prepare for your next mission. Do the same thing. Do your research. And, and we will post a link to the information you have on the Great Big Podcast's Facebook page so that the people who are listening to this can easily access the information you have so that they can prepare for this or if they maybe want to tell a friend or, or something like or that. Or even get ready for the next one. Yeah. yeah. And um, you mentioned the two big job fairs. We mm-hmm. also have some mini job fairs uh, eight months out of the year. Okay. And those are going to be almost every month. Mm-hmm. Wow. With, with the exceptions of when I do a mega job fair, or November and December, everybody's in the holidays. Right. Other than that, I always have a mini job here. Let's talk about the how it works because you've got hundreds of employers. Club Hood's only so big, mm-hmm. right? And the potential of thousands of job seekers coming through the the doors of Club Hood from ten to three on the fourteenth. Uh, nobody can park there, right? Tell me how this works because the, the folks need to know that too. Yes, sir. As you mentioned, we're limited parking here on, at the Club Hood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what we do is we have offer parking at the Fort Hood Stadium or the old Warrior Way PX. Right. And then we have shuttle buses that will run continuously from 9.30 to uh, 3 o'clock. Mm-hmm. So it's take you back and forth. If you're an individual that needs a special parking space, uh, DV, handicap, there are some handicap spaces at the uh, Club Hood. However, they're limited. So I highly suggest you use one of the shuttle buses. Right. So, so if you're coming from off post and, and you're not familiar with, with Fort Hood, mm-hmm. find your find yourself at the PX, find that, mm-hmm. and then look for the shuttle buses. Will it be obvious? or? Yes, it'll be obvious. It, but remember, it's at the Warri- old Warrior Way PX. Oh, okay. So, right. the, so you, you've got one on the east side of post, and you've got one on the west side of post where the stadium is on Clear mm-hmm. Creek. So, Correct. And then yeah. the one in the west side which is where the stadium is, where we'll have shuttles right. from there. All right. So the one that looks gutted. Correct. All right. <laughs> hey, it looks gutted. I mean, it's across the street from the airfield. That is that is the one that people are, oh, yeah, that play, that derelict. That's where. And there'll, they there'll be from. signs all over Fort Hood directing them to Club Hood, how to get there. All right. Very good. So this is kind of the Super Bowl, and you get to do it twice a year for the – uh, TAP program, the Soldier for Life program, isn't it? Oh, yes, sir. And you mentioned earlier, you being the big 
Welcome to the big the great big podcast. Okay. Well, Fort Hood has the largest SFL tap career fair. Wow. In the army. Actually, in all service, we do have the largest one. Man, if you're in, and I'm going to be honest here, all right? You join the army, not everybody ends up being happy with the army. It it's really no it's sometimes you you join it and you're like oh maybe you know this was an interesting part of my life but now thank you so much you know i'm moving on the the big thing is people join it for college mm-hmm. but they don't realize they get all this other stuff and even if you're not happy god bless you we still love you here's some stuff to help you set you up for success That's you right. know and thank you for your service I want to thank you so much for being on the, the podcast today. And one more time from the cheap seats, the mm-hmm. date, the time, where, the when? 14 January, Tuesday, from 10 to 3 at Club Hood here on Fort Hood. And don't forget to use the shuttle bus service. That's right. That's right. 8, 9, 10. Crocky, here goes another one. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I'm trying to work out here. Oh, what you are. But so is everyone else, mate. Just get out of the way and let me put these weights back. Now, that's just it, mate. You gotta be real careful about how you do that, boy, Cracky. Because the next thing you know, someone will be right behind you. You won't even see them coming. They'll sneak right up on you. And if these weights aren't in the right place, well, they just might bite you. Thanks, Outback Jack. I didn't realize the dangers of my actions. Now I know the proper weight placement isn't just an option. It's the right thing to do. Oh, champion. You've got it now, mate. It's me, Super Mario. Woohoo! Hello to all my friends is at the Fort Hood's Great Big Podcast. You number one. Coming on strong on a Monday. I feel so low. Won't be long. Hello, we are back again. Why, yes, we are. Yes, and you missed an entire segment. <laughs> <laughs> I was busy. How's that cold doing you? Um, it's. It's getting better. The mornings are the bad time. The evenings aren't so bad. There were entire sections of the podcast that people will not hear because we cut them out where people are just exactly. coughing, gagging, and dying in here. <laughs> uh, hopefully we're better next week. It's a whole yes. week to heal. I hope so. I yeah. have stocked up on the NyQuil, the DayQuil, Alka-Seltzer. Everybody and their neighbor is giving me allergy remedies Mm -hmm. you know and what's funny is i'm already i've been to the doctor i'm on three medications i'm on eye drops i'm on all this other stuff nothing is working well really unfortunate i'm not gonna let the trees win i'm not gonna (laughs) let the trees win (laughs) the uh so that about wraps up what we got for this one but we got something really cool coming up next week because yeah. with that all that job fair talk mm-hmm. we're going to be live ish we're going to record live we can't actually be live because right. we don't know a transmitter we're going to record live at the mega career fair yay so we're going to be the three people with headphones on <laughs> and microphones <laughs> sitting at a table if you're at the mega career fair stop by and say hi and maybe you'll find yourself on Fort Hood's great big podcast. Or, you know, I'll just go over there and zip time and bring them over. Yeah, you might just get <laughs> dragged uh, not to our basement. Yeah. We can sign fan autographs. Mm-hmm. Uh, all two fans, you said? Yes. Well, I, well I'll have to see if my mom can make it up here. <laughs> oh, down here. No, yeah, down here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, once again, congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Big announcement. That's yes. fantastic. One more time. Yeah. yeah. And I guess we'll see all of you next week on Fort Hood's Great Great Big Big Podcast. Podcast. Yeehaw. Bye, y'all.